just setting up, um, we want to start very soon. Have we been able to? Oh, excellent. Okay. So we're going to start now. <laughs> but, great. All right. Well, um, welcome. As I said, I mean, I think I can sit down. Uh, my name is Futal Kumar, and I am Head of Global Engagement uh, at Global Partners Digital. I'm also a co-facilitator of the Policy Network, and I'm joined here by my fellow co-facilitator, Bruna, who will introduce herself. Um, and then we'll set out the um, plan for the session, um, so you know how we are going to conduct it, when you can come in with your perspectives. Of course, if you're um, online and want to share um, anything on the chat, you're very welcome to do so. Bruna? Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Bruna Santos. I'm a MAG member, but um, also a, one of the co-facilitators of the PNIF. Welcome to the session, and it's really good to see you all here. Should I go with the session um, organization? Yeah, so the we have a, a, an agenda for today. We're just going to go with a little introduction of the policy network and internet fragmentation. Um, afterwards, we're going to explain to you what does the framework mean? Um, that's part of the work that the PNIF um, developed during the year. And then we're gonna move on into a town hall discussion with our panelists. Um, we have a few of them um, online. We also have Hulu on site. So um, it's gonna be a good um, discussion today. I don't know where is this noise. I have to <laughs> Can you guys hear well? Is this noise um, uncomfortable? Okay, ah, good. Good, good, good. Okay, so yeah, um, so yeah, I think we can introduce the the PNF sure. Okay, um, the policy network on internet fragmentation is also part of the intersessional work for the IGF. Um, this is part of a community request, community proposal that was submitted to the MAG. Um, on the need, and to the Secretariat as well, on the need to discuss and, and further discuss um, internet fragmentation. So um, other than this being born from a multi-stakeholder initiative, um, we also, with the PNIF, we all aim to offer a systematic and comprehensive framework um, of this issue and discussions complemented by case studies, um, and also in an attempt to define or try to define fragmentation and discuss um, strategies to avoid it. We're back. I think we can come back. Thank you. I hope the noise goes away. Yes. So yeah, as I was saying, um, I'll just try to repeat in a, in a briefer way, but um, the policy network on internet fragmentation is this multi-stakeholder effort to address and discuss what fragmentation means and, and what are the strategies to avoid it in, in, very, um, in a very broad and short um, 
explanation of this. Um, it's also worth mentioning that it's multi-stakeholder, so we also have a, a group, a multi-stakeholder group that helped us um, steer the work, um, and that's also part of the group that we have been relying on um, throughout the year. But other than that, um, this PNIF has held webinars and a few um, conversations with the community in an attempt to develop the framework we're gonna introduce to you today. So I guess that on, on, on the PNIF in general, right? And, and I guess I'll give the floor back to Shital. Okay, thank you, Bruna. Uh, yes, yeah, so we wanted to give you an introduction to the framework we've developed over the past few months within the policy network. The framework has been developed uh, as a result of conversations that we've had uh, with many of you who have attended the webinars uh, that we've hosted online um, and the survey uh, that we also published online. And these have been driven by some key questions uh, which relate to what fragmentation is, how it's manifesting, where, We've taken some examples of what people have commonly referred to as uh, examples of internet fragmentation and posed it in the webinars and asked, is this, how, do you think this is internet fragmentation? Do you think a network disruption is internet fragmentation? Do you think data localization measures are? Do you think alternate uh, root servers are? And in that way, we were trying to understand where there might be some commonality um, in, in the discussion because there are so many different perceptions of internet fragmentation. We know the conversation has been going on for a long time. A number of people have been working on it, have published studies, have been discussing the issue, but it has become more salient uh, in recent um, months. Uh, and, and it is, of course, um, one of the areas of the Global Digital Compact um, and, and part of the agenda this year at the IGF across different sessions. And I think we're going to do our best to try and make sure that we are um, bringing in the perspectives that have been shared at the other sessions on internet fragmentation into this. And when, of course, we encourage you uh, to, to come in um, with your perspectives as well. So I just wanted to explain a bit about the framework, which I don't think we have put um, up on the on, on the screen yet, but essentially, um, as we were having these discussions, um, as I mentioned about what, what is internet fragmentation, there were two main areas um, that people continue to speak to, um, or we identified as two main areas. One was the fragmentation of the user experience. Um, and that, for example, can be a result of uh, disruptions, um, intentional disruptions to information flows, for example, through network disruptions. Um, and uh, other examples could be through policy measures um, that block um, data from, from flowing across borders. Um, and there are a number of other examples as well um, that people people shared where they, I think uh, the main difference to the other aspect um, which we identified, which is fragmentation of the, the technical layer, is that while the, um, the fundamental protocols and um, the technical layer of the internet may be intact, the actual experience of the internet as a space of information, um, free information flows is, is not uh, the case. Um, for those who experience such measures, as I've just mentioned, um, and as 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 the the increased uh, tendency to use those um, measures uh, it, it manifests um, through through policies and actions um, of both uh, state and commercial actors, uh, that fundamentally shapes uh, the user experience of the internet. So then. Um, we also discussed other types of fragmentation that are commonly referred to. Some of these may not have happened yet, but are, are, are often referred to, um, and, and there is a concern around them. Um, so that is, for example, uh, proposals to have alternate root servers or DNS. Um, other practices that we're seeing um, that are actually happening uh, that, that could impact um, the internet um, for example, re rerouting, blocking, essentially digital sovereignty practices, some of which we heard at the Internet Society session uh, yesterday, that impact interoperability and can fundamentally impact the Internet. 
So I think um, there are some areas of, of connection between these uh, different um, aspects of fragmentation that we identified. One is, of course, the control over information flows that removes the ability for a user to decide um, if and when they can access information online. But there's also, um, so there's this question of, of control over information. Um, but there's also this overarching point that kept coming up in our discussions, which is around the governance of the internet. Um, and moving away from, um, or perhaps um, and not uh, ensuring that there are uh, linked up discussions, um, that uh, spaces where protocols, standards, um, and, and other spaces where policies are developed um, are um, disjointed, and that that can contribute to um, to issues around connectivity and interoperability um, that we are seeing. And so that there is a need to understand that the overall governance of the internet is, um, thank you, um, impacting across uh, the, the two aspects um, that we've just discussed. So as I said, I wanna bring in other discussions that have happened this week. Um, there was a, a day zero session uh, on internet fragmentation on Monday, many of you may have been there. Uh, some of the elements uh, that we want to discuss in the in the framework, uh, which is available online. Sorry, I should have said if it's not up there, um, but it is available on the Policy Network webpage, and I encourage you to look at it. Um, are qualifying whether certain measures and actions uh, could constitute internet fragmentation, and some of the criteria that were was discussed was around. For example, duration, um, if, an, if network disruptions, as an example, um, uh, last for a certain period of time, impact a certain number of people, um, then potentially, you know, we can say that that, is, that qualifies as fragmentation. Um, and that the, the experience um, of, of fragmentation or the, uh, the different manifestations um, in the, whether it's at the technical layer or at, at at the um, user experience uh, could could be on a, on, a, on a spectrum that we can collectively identify and then be able to point to and say, well, at this point, we're talking about internet fragmentation. This may sound a little bit abstract. The point is to have provided something um, that builds on the conversations of the past few months within the policy network that will hopefully provide a basis for us to continue discussion, to unpack those elements in greater detail, um, to develop as well, hopefully, um, not only a common understanding of the, of the problem, but also some solutions and recommendations to different actors um, to address um, these issues. And so that's what we want to discuss here with you today is how helpful the framework is, if it's helpful at all, um, how it could be used. And, and we want to unpack the different elements in more detail. Our speakers will help us do that, but we really want to hear from you as well. Um, and then we want to hear as well from you about how we can in ensure greater discussion with, um, with, with more stakeholders um, and get them involved as well. So I think, uh, Bruna, we're going to turn over to the town hall uh, discussion now. Um, so I'll turn over to you. Thank you so much. And before going to that, it's also worth mentioning that um, the PNIS mailing list is open. So if any of you is interested in joining these discussions, please join the mailing list. There is a dedicated um, page on the website, the IGF website. So you can also help us um, improve and, and enhance these discussions on fragmentation. But also today, the idea is to collect some input on this, and, and now I have the, the honor to introduce a Brazilian colleague also in, in starting our town hall discussions. Um, Tulio Andrade is a deputy head at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs um, back in Brazil. So Tulio, mostly our question to you is um, whether you consider the framework to be helpful and what could be your consideration to that? Thank you very much, Bruna and Chital, for the invitation and for the opportunity to uh, contribute to such an important debate. And uh, when I uh, was asking myself uh, whether the framework is useful, 
uh, the obvious uh, answer uh, is uh, yes, of course, uh, the framework is useful because it gives us the, the opportunity to launch the debate, to exchange views, um, and also it reviews some uh, outstanding gaps and biases that uh, we may have. And uh, one bias that um, uh, uh, came to mind um, is actually the focus on the user experience, which is a very, very important dimension um, of um, uh, the role of the internet, uh, which is very much anchored uh, on human rights, uh, but in a, um, a particular civil and political uh, dimension of human rights. And perhaps uh, it may leave aside another very important dimension of human rights, which um, are those uh, social, economic, and cultural human rights, and in the context of their indivisibility and uh, interdependency, uh, this is a dimension that we cannot uh, uh, live without. Um, uh, and this is particularly important uh, when we are talking about uh, the role of the internet in uh, promoting the common good, uh, public interest, and uh, um, uh, the collectivity and communities in the ground. Um, we've, we've been seeing, uh, especially here uh, at the uh, INADIS, uh, uh, and uh, from many of the high-level discussions, a call from the international community uh, upon us, the internet community, uh, to help solve global and collective problems. Uh, for us to uh, contribute to the promotion of the sustainable development goals, for us to help solve the climate crisis, for us to help prevent the next pandemic. And when we're talking about that, um, we, we have to ask ourselves, uh, what user are we talking about? Are we talking about the user in Silicon Valley, or are we talking about the user perhaps that can only access the internet in public schools, or are we talking about hospitals that depend on data? And then the notion of data fragmentation is extremely important here as well. Uh, so uh, um, one thing that came to mind is perhaps the, the, the need for, for us to move uh, from a rather individualistic um, approach to one that is uh, human-centric, but very much grounded on what we have as the most noble of uh, uh, human qualities, on, on empathy, on solidarity. Um, so this is um, one uh, aspect uh, for, uh, for thought in terms of the focus on um, uh, the user experience, but also the, the need for us to consider that the internet now um, has a, a different role. Uh, it, it, it has to be used not only in terms of the individual experience, but also for us to um, achieve and promote collective uh, values and also to solve global issues that uh, can actually impair human existence. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tulio. Also, um, I would like to welcome our line panelists if they want to weigh in on the, the worth of the framework, if you also would like to add some points to that. Um, the audience as well, from what you're hearing so far, um, would you guys, maybe we can try to have a show of hands, would it be, does it sound like an interesting um, framework or initial document? Obviously, this is something that we'll be working with. Um, the PNIF has a two-year mandate. This has been just the first one. So, but would you guys consider this also to be an interesting um, approach to the issue and discussion? Maybe. Uh, Bruno, maybe it's good to have the framework on the screen. So if we could have the second slide or the third slide uh, projected on the, on the screen. It might be easier for the people in the room. Yep, I just try to, I'm just going to ask again whether Mazuba or Olaf or um, 
Nawal would like to weigh in on the framework as well. We're going to continue with the discussion if you don't, um, if you would like to, to continue with that, but just giving you guys the opportunity to also comment. If you would like, just raise your hands on the Zoom. Zoom. Should we just jump in? Yes. Okay. Hello. Hi. Um, yeah, I mean, there's more that we'll discuss, but I think there were some really interesting questions posed um, initially. I think this question around what user are we talking about is very, very interesting. Understanding that there are multitudes of users, but how do we understand different groups and categories of users and the challenges that they're facing? How do we... Um, infiltrate or incorporate that into the framework, I think is a really interesting consideration. And so just excited for this conversation today. Thank you so much. We're still trying to get the slides on the <laughs> on the screen. We apologize for that. Yes, um, we just need to go to the second slide in case anyone is, is helping us um, operate that. But then I, I can give back the floor, Chantal, so we can continue the discussion. Okay. Uh, so while we wait to get the slides up, I wanted to introduce Nawal Omar from Research ICT Africa um, to, as we now go on to the second question about uh, the the two aspects, the main aspects of the framework, one being around user experience fragmentation, the other one, the technical layer fragmentation. We want to uh, understand better, and we've done quite a lot of discussion around this, but we wanted to, of course, bring it here to the IGF um, and hear from you about what examples uh, and what counts as fragmentation in those different areas. So now, uh, Omar, you are a researcher at Research ICT Africa, um, and I hope that you can come in and, and hear us and we can hear you. Um, we would be very interested to hear from you uh, about your understanding and experience of um, that user experience element of internet fragmentation. No? Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for including me in this discussion. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so um, some of the examples of uh, user experience for internet fragmentation. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, my like view and my experience in Sudan um, for internet shutdowns and uh, censorship and blocking websites and web pages and all. So one of the example are, are the restrictive internet models, which include censorship, internet shutdowns, and political control of the internet, uh, underlying uh, architect architecture. Um, and uh, also it, it has been used as a, a untargeted repression tool, uh, which includes prohibiting certain web pages, social media uh, services, or blocking VPNs among others. Um, also, another technique that was used uh, for untargeted repression, uh, suppressing the freedom of expressions and press, uh, curbing the internet uh, or forcing it to full kill for a long uh, time in Sudan. Uh, also, one of the recent examples was India, Kazakhstan, Myanmar as one of the examples for internet shutdowns. Um, so internet shutdowns are becoming commonly employed as strategic measures in countering political instability and tool uh, used by authoritarian regime. Um, uh, yeah, so, um, um, so targeted internet disruption, including shutdowns and social media restrictions have gone hand in hand with political turmoil in Sudan since the onset of protest in 2018 that led to transitional civilian rule. Uh, we've been experiencing two, a total to near total network disruption manifesting in telecommunications blackout for um, like almost like na nationwide, almost all population. Um, 
So the, during the country longest record network disruption, Sudan cut social media for 68 days uh, to quell protests with Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and WhatsApp, all social media has been down. Um, also from 21 December, 2018, up to February 26, 2019, um, uh, internet has been uh, forced to like shut down for scale, um, uh, leaving Sudan offline for uh, thir 36 days from June uh, to, uh, from 3rd of June to 9 July, 2019. Um, uh, also, we have been experienced internet shutdowns for like more than 24 days in 2021 after the coup. Um, so it's, it's, it's a long, it's a long, um, it's a long period of time to like keep people offline. And it has its effects on uh, on like all kind of users, uh, people that work in online platform work. Uh, it has affected uh, people that are studying online, people that have exams online. Um, we have also experienced um, internet shutdowns due to like exams, uh, national exams, and school exams. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, like the intensity and severity of internet disruption, social media restriction has like left Sudan to rank the second among Afri uh, amongst African countries. Um, yes, yeah, so um, um, I just think that uh, the user experience uh, for internet fragmentation is very important to take it into account. Uh, it's it's really um, uh, affecting uh, like from uh, all kind of users to the like the if we think about like the low level of users like to drill down even someone that want to serve the internet to just like watch TikTok videos um, uh, we have to uh, preserve the rights of all uh, users to use a free and open internet. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you so much for sharing those perspectives um, and and your experience. Uh, I, I think especially um, bringing so much detail as well uh, to to the discussion um, and and explaining uh, the different ways um, that uh, these these shutdowns and how long they were as well impacted people is is really important to consider and is one aspect of the user experience um, element of the, the, the model um, or framework we've developed that really kept coming through in discussions. Uh, there are others, um, of course, and we'll, we, we can go to those. But now I wanna turn to Olaf Coltman uh, from the Internet Society. Olaf, the other element of the framework that we have been discussing uh, is, is uh, the fragmentation um, at the technical layer. Now, perhaps you can shed some light uh, for us on what that um, what that means to you. I know that we have had some discussions about that, um, but this is an area where I think we do need some more unpacking and, and discussion to better understand um, what is happening. Olaf, over to you. Yeah, and I think that, um, uh, hello everybody, good morning, good afternoon, uh, wherever you are in the world. Um, the beauty of the internet is that we're now together. Isn't that amazing again? Um, the way that I want to approach this is, uh, is through the document, through looking at the document. We have um, uh, uh, provided a number of bullet points in which we describe um, uh, 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 fragmentation at the technical level. Um, and, and what that fragmentation is. Um, and, and the lens through which we look when we look at fragmentation at the technical level is really the infrastructure level. Um, and that's captured by this term called the public core of the internet. Um, uh, in the document it says the public core is not universally defined. Um, and it's a term that came up in the discussions around cyber stability in, uh, in the UN. It was a, a term that was coined uh, by a, 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 in a Dutch report 
um, a, a term that was adopted uh, uh, by the Global Commission on the Stability of Cyberspace. And so a fairly useful uh, 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 term that indicates or is defined by roughly uh, the naming, the routing, uh, the forwarding and uh, a cryptographic infrastructure that is needed to operate the uh, internet at global scale. So naming, DNS, routing and addressing is address distribution and the decentralized routing that makes up the internet uh, and then the encryption infrastructure is also infrastructure that we need collectively um, uh, uh, to, to, to interoperate. Um, if we don't have uh, 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 certificate authorities, for instance, if we don't have common protocols to work with uh, encryption, it, 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 it will not work. Um, obviously, that's not the only infrastructure that we have around. Um, and it might be that in, uh, in the course of uh, technical development, new in, uh, infrastructure becomes important for the internet. Uh, just to give an example of that, if you log into many websites nowadays, you can choose your, you know, your Google ID or your Facebook ID or your GitHub ID to log in. Um, the underlying uh, technology that is used for that is called OAuth. But what you see is that those services now become infrastructure for, uh, 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 for, for, for other services. So where that boundary is between the, the, the hard wires and, and cables uh, with the routing infrastructure on top of that and uh, where infrastructure stops is a, is a matter of, um, of, uh, of, of, of of you know trying to find where that point is on the on the sliding window that uh, she mentioned in the beginning if you look at the examples there's another example that i want to point out because it might be a little bit dense in the way that is written in the report and that's um the 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 example that is given is routing of internet traffic via private infrastructure by big tech companies um if you read it like that, it might be a little bit uh, uh, curious to say what is what does that have to do with fragmentation. But this is sort of a, an example of a long-term commercial activity that might, and there's a, a it's almost a capital letter uh, uh, M there in might, uh, lead to fragmentation on the long term. Um, what what we what we what what could happen here is that. Uh, investment in those private infrastructures so uh, big uh, 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 Google building cables to move the data that they, they use to feed their data centers um, and not using the public internet um, if you have a lot of that type of infrastructure um, then what you might see is under investment in in transit infrastructure so uh, the, the infrastructure that uh, people use to to get to other content than uh, that of uh, of the of only the biggest uh, cloud providers, so to say. And if that underinvestment happens for a long time, it might be that those type of uh, transit networks become uh, less stable, and that might lead in the end to fragmentation. That is perhaps a little bit of a of a long stretch and uh, 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 sort of a, a theoretical example, um, but we have it there because uh, um, um, fragmentation can happen in in very many ways, and uh, we wanted to trigger uh, people's imagination a little bit. Um, another part in the document here is the fragmentation of internet governance and coordination. Um, as you all know, the internet infrastructure is uh, run by many organizations. The infrastructure is decentralized. Uh, the naming structure is decentralized. There, uh, there is a root server, but uh, uh, or there's a, 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 a root of the DNS, which is uh, sort of centrally managed, but 
uh, underneath there, there is a there is a hierarchy of uh, of independent organizations that um, um, that run their own namespace, so to speak. Um, uh, perhaps based on conflicts with uh, with ICANN, but sometimes also uh, completely independently. Um, and that type of, uh, of of architecture, the type of architecture that the internet is, the, the naming, the routing, and the forwarding, again, that public core, um, uh, the management of that is, uh, is, is, a, is, 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 is basically a multi-stakeholder uh, 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 way of managing um, uh, that layer. And um, it's important that we don't see the fragmentation of that. For instance, uh, it is very important uh, that uh, internet addresses are uniquely uh, distributed so that every uh, network operator has uh, uh, a unique set of addresses uh, uh, to work with and uh, that they can route. Um, any uh, fragmentation of the, uh, the, the system uh, of uh, uh, address allocation might mean that we, we we have conflicting information there that the registry is not intact anymore, and and that would lead to uh, disastrous effects. Um, uh, I I I think so. This is something of an example where fragmentation of the internet governance and coordination might be might be problematic. Uh, also, a very theoretical example. Um, um, I, I think that uh, the fragmentation of the uh, internet technical layer is uh, perhaps the last type of fragmentation that we will run into. Um, uh, uh, but but um, uh, these are the the, the uh, examples and the frame uh, in the framework that we work with. I, I hope that clarified somewhat. Uh, Shital, back to you. Thank you, Olaf. I think that was very helpful uh, in, in, in helping us understand what we mean um, when we, we talk about fragmentation um, and the possible uh, fragmentation we may see. Um, you spoke about the importance of protecting the internet infrastructure and uh, um, where on, on a sliding scale, perhaps we may see practices, whether it's around um, commercial, activities um, or otherwise um, and that, that can lead to internet fragmentation as a result of different different impacts, for example, perhaps an underinvestment in, in transit infrastructure. You also spoke to the need to maintain um, a, a governance framework, a multi-stakeholder governance framework to ensure an open interoperable internet, linking those things together. Uh, the, the independent and different actors, but but um, but working together, and how that may be under threat. So I think it's a good time to open up. Maybe uh, if anyone has any reactions, you can also speak to whether you think the framework is missing something or uh, are unhelpful in some way, um, or if you have other examples uh, that you want to share to unpack the different elements, the two main elements, three, actually. Uh, we'd really love to hear from you. Also, so if you anyone, put up your hands and on the chat. I was just going to say that if anyone on the Zoom room wants to come in as well, just raise your hand or let us know in the chat. Thank you. Uh, Sheetal, yes. maybe before we go, it would be good to go again through the framework as we didn't oh. have it on screen. Do uh, but I'm happy, happy to do so if you want. Uh, because I think before we go to the uh, discussion, and as Sheetal has asked your feedback on the uh, framework itself and how it is used, how it can be used, how it is useful, uh, I think it's good to repeat again what actually the intention or the aim is or the conclusion through the discussions uh, at the different webinars we came to. And that is that um, focusing too much on discussing what fragmentation is and try to come up with one overarching um, definition just gets us into trouble and in, into hours of, of debate and with this framework we actually try to uh, come up with three baskets and say if people uh, if you hear people at the webinars we organize within the policy network if you hear them talking about fragmentation either they are 
talking about something that can be linked or put in the basket fragmentation of user experiments, or they are talking about the really core architecture and the technical layer of the internet, or a third uh, basket we, we kind of defined through those discussions is they're talking about fragmentation of, uh, of internet governance or governance uh, of parts of, of the internet. So that's the reasoning that's behind the, uh, the framework itself. It's not to define what fragmentation is. It is based on what we heard uh, through the webinars, what people are talking about if we ask what is fragmentation, what is uh, inter fragmentation that should be avoided. Uh, so that's uh, the ideas. And I think that's she that was Sheetal's, uh, Sheetal's first question. Is something missing or is everything it, we would ask uh, you or the panelists, what actually is in your definition or your mind fragmentation? Does it fit in one of those baskets? And then the follow-up questions are, and probably work still needs to be done, is, is really look into the links of the uh, fragmentation. And I think then the second part of the um, of today's meeting also will be uh, the question on if you look in within those three baskets, what should be the next steps uh, in the discussion and what can be done in uh, to avoid these types of fragmentation and so on. So I just wanted to clarify that. That's great. Thank you so much, Wim. I hope that was helpful. Uh, so now we can open up. Uh, does anyone want to um, share their perspectives? I see one here, anyone else, one at the back, middle. Okay, we'll take three and then we can come back. I'm just, um, you know, looking at the at the graphic. One thing that isn't, you know, coming up in the discussion is this framework of uh, what what fragmentation is. We're talking about is that some fragmentation of the user experience isn't going to result in technical fragmentation. Technical fragmentation will always result in user fragmentation. Um, I, I think there's this sort of, you know, we we think about it. Um, there's certain forms of fragmentation that is going to be devastate and long-term and, and so on. There are other forms of fragmentation that arise simply by commercial activities happening and we need to be aware of it and we need to work on ways of bringing back a global internet. Um, but I, I do think that if we really want to get to the nuts and bolts of the problem of fragmentation, um, we do need to sort of understand that there are certain, uh, and that technical fragmentation is, is at a much lower level um, and it's got much more adverse ramifications. Um, you know, so I, I would sort of almost put more like a pyramid than, than the sort of interaction uh, type mechanism. I, I don't think um, private companies sort of deciding to do business in one, one market or another is going to, you know, have the same ramifications as, as anything on the technical layer, um, such as corruption at Africa. Thank you for that. Um, interested to hear others' views on that as well. Uh, and um, the, yes, person at the back, and then we'll come to you in the middle, please. If you don't mind introducing yourself, sorry, I forgot to say that earlier. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Shabnam. I'm with the International Center for Not-for-Profit Law. Um, I just want to thank you for uh, presenting on the framework. Um, I think one of the things that I've struggled with um, at IGF is uh, when I've been attending the um, fragmentation sessions, uh, it just seems like there is uh, a very differing uh, perspectives that are shaped by political views um, regarding what is fragmentation and which aspects of fragmentation are most relevant. Um, and uh, I think that that was a struggle because this, this like initial framing wasn't in place for those discussions. Um, and so I, I found this discussion quite helpful. Uh, uh, and I hope that, you know, that framing <laughs> uh, is, is used uh, uh, more readily uh, in the future. Um, and I guess my question is, um, if you could elaborate on the, on the criteria that you mentioned, you had said something about duration and, and the extent of the impacts. And I was wondering in terms of uh, the, the, uh, the human rights framework that maybe was used to think through uh, 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 the, the extent or the, uh, how, 
how problematic each type of fragmentation is, um, and if that was part of the uh, part of the discussion or part of the underlying um, uh, thinking behind behind the framework as well. Great, thank you. Happy to to answer that. Um, and now the person in the middle, please. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Abebe Bekele from Ethiopia. I'm working as the Global Technology and Digital Solution in INHO. And uh, what I would like to say is, uh, well, it's good. I mean, the topic is good. Talking about the policy, the fragmentation is good. But we need to, to teach our users also. You know, as we all know, resources are not ample. They are uh, scarce. We, do, we have a, a scarce resource. For instance, let's, let's see. This all, how many users are connected to the internet? But how many of us are using actively? If we are not using it, why do we connect it? This also uh, saves us our resources and it enables us to consume properly. Thank you. Yeah, oh, I think that's a really important point about um, scarce resources and, and using them in a certain way and, and, and the sort of um, commitments, values, principles uh, that, that shape, uh, drive where and how resources are spent. Um, and so we have a question there. I just wanted to, maybe we take the first three. Okay, and one here. Okay, um, but we can respond to the first three and I wanna just check if the panelists want to perhaps take any of those questions, including um, the first one, which was around how technical fragmentation has broader a more perhaps serious impacts um, and always impacts user experience, but not vice versa. Is that a problem? Could we still continue to discuss and and um, and of course try and understand the links between the two? Um, any any reactions to that? I think that was an interesting perspective. And then I do have a response to that question about you know what we discussed when it came to the human rights elements. Um, but panelists first and then we'll come to you that's okay and to yourself thank you very much it's all and uh this is very uh, uh very exciting discussion and uh, it only testifies to the uh importance and value of the framework because it provides us a platform to to, to discuss um and uh, building on many of the uh, views that have been expressed by um, uh, uh, not only the panelists but 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 also some uh, from the audience. Um, if we are to engage also in addition to the uh, missing link on the uh, collectivity, uh, on the role of the collectivity, on us uh, to move from a, a, a paradigm of um, individualism to a paradigm in which we are going to accept our radical interdependence uh, in, uh, as one humanity, uh, this is one aspect that we would need to be uh, uh, to have reflected in the uh, in the framework. But uh, there are also two others that um, um, are related to that. The first one is um, to move beyond coordination uh, towards uh, a framework of cooperation. We need enhanced cooperation among all stakeholders. Uh, and a model of leadership in which uh, uh, each stakeholder uh, will exercise leadership by empowering the other stakeholder, uh, a model of leadership of mutual empowerment. So uh, this element of uh, cooperation is something that is very much important uh, when you're talking about uh, internet governance. The technical uh, aspect of the internet is not enough anymore when we are dealing with uh, something that is extremely uh, uh, important. It is fundamental uh, for us to, to achieve not only uh, the full potential of the internet, but also uh, for us to address um, some of the key challenges that we have before us, uh, like climate, uh, for example. Um, Going back to the technical uh, also aspect uh, and the core infrastructure of the internet, um, the framework does um, 
uh, enumerate a number of risks. And th there is one single uh, risk that is uh, largely missing uh, there, which is the legal risk. We have to consider also uh, the fact that uh, when we have uh, ICANN, which is a, a cooperation that is uh, subjected to the legislation of uh, the state of California, we do have the legal risk uh, of uh, a single judge in California to also be a driver of internet fragmentation. And this relates to uh, an outstanding work uh, that uh, within ICANN, the ICANN community uh, has uh, uh, signaled the importance in terms of the accountability to work on jurisdiction. We have not worked, uh, we have not fulfilled this mandate uh, within ICANN. And until we fulfill it, until we conclude this, we are still going to have the legal risk um, uh, in terms of internet fragmentation. So these are three points. Um, the first one, uh, uh, the need for us to move from in, uh, a more uh, from a individualistic to a collective framework. Uh, the need for us to move from only co co coordination to a model of co cooperation and mutual empowerment uh, among all the stakeholders. And the third, also this legal risk, which um, relates to uh, pending work on jurisdiction within ICANN. Thank you. Thank you, Julio. That, um, that was bringing even more into the discussion, which I think is helpful, And um, but we still have this reference of, of the framework and the different ways uh, we can approach what you've just mentioned. Uh, I just wanted to answer quickly that question about um, the criteria and and then we'll take two questions just uh, so we don't miss that. Um, so in terms of the, the criteria, what, what we have been discussing and what I heard earlier this week as well is that what would be helpful and we don't have that yet is once we unpack um, what we mean in each area of fragmentation to perhaps identify at what point um, certain practices would constitute or qualify as, as internet fragmentation because of their um, impact, for example. So would one instance of a shutdown that lasts an hour, say, you know, this is um, um, this an example uh, to help elucidate the point, is that the same uh, or would that count as fragmentation? Um, or, or would it require a certain um, number of a certain type um, to, to qualify? Um, similarly, with some of the, the points that Olaf was making about perhaps consolidation um, um, of, and commercial activities um, at the technical layer or, um, and there's the sliding window that he mentioned. So what is the criteria that gets you to a certain point where you qualify something um, as a manifestation or as a measure that has um, a fragmentation impact? That's a question. It's not an answer. It's a question. We can frame it in a better way. <laughs> but um, one thing that was mentioned that you alluded to, I think, is using a framework like the International Human Rights Framework to decide um, whether an instance of fragmentation is, is bad, so to speak, and has that um, impact on an open and inter uh, interoperable internet that we would want to stop and avoid. For example, with data governance frameworks, it was brought up, um, and colleagues, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was brought up uh, during one of our webinars that while a data governance framework might result in, in the short term, um, uh, certain requirements around uh, certain safeguards, for example, that must be um, uh, must be in place before data flows. If the result, the end result, is um, stronger norms and um, user rights are respected, then you know we we perhaps wouldn't call that internet fragmentation because the net result is is positive for the user. Again, this is just an example. I'm not saying that it's correct or, or or everyone agrees on that um but it was discussed so can we take those two questions and then we can come back to the panel okay you first. yes you were first. thank you uh, my name is Lin Yan from china i sit in Tech state and Tsinghua university and i have a question regarding the fragmentation of internet governance and course coordination uh, so I am looking at the document, and it mentioned that the government and stakeholders to address global internet policy issues 
uh, a human rights and the free flow of data perspective, but it's showing a divergence on the data, data governance worldwide, especially the major economies like European Union, United States, China and India. So my question is uh, how to figure out the policy fragmentation and also what will the challenges be to achieve the inter inter international coordination? Thank you. Thank you for that. And if any of the panelists want to respond, please do. We're going to take one more question and then we'll go to the um, online uh, panelists. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I have a simple uh, psychology or taxonomy question for the professionals in the field, because this is not area of my expertise. Would you consider dark net a part of this discussion or not? Oh, we haven't we haven't had that question come up yet. So, if you would like to answer anyone um, or the panelists, please do. But I know that there were already uh, there was already hands up for the for for answering the other questions. So I think we'll go to those. Olaf. Yeah. Oh, that that last question is very inspiring. Actually, it's a it's a it's a it's a good question. So uh, uh, let me start with that darknet question. So if I look at the darknet, then in essence, from a technical infrastructure perspective, uh, 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 the darknet, as as we all know, are are those sites and 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 uh, uh, information that cannot be readily found through the regular search engine. Um, but these, this, this, this information is available through the internet uh, uh, in some way or through some uh, set of protocols. So in that sense, uh, internet networking and interoperability for those, those types of information is there and there is no fragmentation. However, if you put um, uh, search engines in your you know, sort of broader definition of what technical infrastructure is, you could actually argue that there is some fragmentation because no search engines don't pick up this information. So I, I, that's the way that I would think about this. The reason why I uh, raised my hand was actually because of the chat. Uh, Ilona Statnik uh, asked a question. I'm not quite sure if I uh, uh, transliterate her name uh, correctly. My Cyrillic is rusty. Um, but, but basically she asks whether the introduction of uh, uh, certificates by governments to uh, uh, basically intercept users traffic uh, as was proposed in Kazakhstan a couple of years back and apparently two days back by the Russian government is uh, interference with, uh, uh, is, is actually causing fragmentation. And, and looking at the definition that we have, interference with the public core of the internet, I would actually say, yes, this is, this is clearly uh, a, 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 a fragmentation. And the way that it works is basically that uh, once those type of certificates are inserted or are being used, then uh, there will be uh, a fragmentation in in the application space of uh, 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 um, uh, applications that will most certainly block that type of certificate. Um, now the question is what to do about this, and I I think we have to be honest and clear that our uh, uh, framework doesn't address actions to um, uh, uh, to to deal with that fragmentation and, and, and uh, uh, very specific cases. Um, it's really a way to, to identify what might lead to fragmentation and indeed then have the follow-up discussion, but I don't think that the framework uh, answers those questions in detail. Uh, Ilona, um, I would say this is something that is of interest in, uh, in, in, in uh, interest for uh, like the Global Encryption Coalition. So um, uh, most certainly bring it up there. Thank you, Ola. Um, are there any other panelists who want to respond? 
Okay, so I think we can now move on to the next part. Una, I'll hand over to you. Sure. Oh, Wim, you've got your hand up. Uh, no, I wanted to add, there was one question in the uh, in the chat asked what the uh, UN um, United Nations family uh, can do or, for example, initiatives such as the Global Digital Compact could do about fragmentation and dealing with it. But I think that this is uh, a question that really fits with the next set of, uh, of the next discussion. So I would suggest that the panelists, when they answer, pick that also up if you ask the question who should be doing what, uh, that they also add this dimension on uh, if there are specific actions related to the uh, global community that should be added uh, instead of answering it now. Sure. Thank you very much for this question on the chat because um, it, it is uh, going to be one of the key priorities in terms of digital uh, governance and, and, and cooperation and the, the, the upcoming work uh, around the Global Digital Compact. And this is a very good reminder because um, it is indeed uh, uh, the, the, the issue, the mission of us avoiding internet fragmentation is, um, is specifically mentioned uh, in the uh, uh, report from the Secretary General, uh, the United Nations Secretary General. And uh, the notion that is uh, put um, out there is uh, to some extent uh, very much different from the one that we are talking about here. Uh, because um, over there it's about um, the fragmentation of the information, uh, the logical layer, uh, uh, the, the need for us uh, to actually have a convergence uh, in terms of um, um, ideas, uh, the conversions in terms of uh, knowledge, the conversions in terms of avoiding eco chambers, and this is something that uh, the framework actually does not capture. Uh, so it would be very useful for us uh, to to also reflect um, uh, this uh, within the framework, uh, go beyond again the the, the technical uh, uh, dimension of this, uh, which uh, as uh, Sam has raised, uh, may um, actually uh, be more uh, faithful to uh, uh, political uh, priorities, so to speak. Um, so uh, avoiding internet fragmentation uh, is one of the key points of the agenda of uh, our uh, IGF here in, in, in Addis. And it may be um, a very good opportunity for us also to um, uh, make a slight adjustment on our policy network, policy network on avoiding internet fragmentation. Thank you so much, Tulio. And, and it's good that we already went, to, went into the responses um, conversation because I also want to bring in uh, Mazuba back again. Mazuba Haniyama is the head of human rights policy for Africa and Middle East at Meta. And Mazuba, basically our question to you is, um, if we're discussing um, approaches to avoiding fragmentation, what kind of responses do you think it's necessary both from policymakers or other stakeholders or even places? Where should this, this discussion be taken to? Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yes, I think, you know, certainly a consolidated, structured and strategic response is needed. I really appreciated what uh, one of the panelists said around um, going beyond coordination and thinking about cooperation. And that's a really important part that I, I hope we come back to. Um, I think there are a number of stakeholders who play a role here and who come together to share how we can be responding. Uh, particularly tech companies being amongst these, um, government policy stakeholders. I think as a company, we, we recognize the role the governments play in avoiding internet fragmentation. And I think we've discussed this a little bit as we think about internet shutdowns. Um, I think also, uh, we spoke a little bit about this too a bit earlier, but I think the Russia-Ukraine war has accelerated trends of deglobalization, protectionism, and nationalism, and this is playing out in the digital sphere too. The rise of an authoritarian internet model, the citizens segregated from the rest of the global internet and subject to extensive surveillance, this presents a real risk to the open accessible internet as we know it. 
Um, and we're constantly encouraging governments to heed their human rights obligations and protect and promote um, the global free flow of information, recognizing access to the internet as a human right, um, and to refuse to resort to internet shutdowns, which inevitably harm human rights, including freedom of expression, access to information. Um, and then, of course, we recognize the role tech companies such as ourselves play, you know, um, with almost 3.5 billion monthly users, Meta's products impact human rights um, for good and for ill, you know, more than many other companies in the world. And this is a responsibility we take very seriously. Um, in our view, you know, one of some of the most important tasks we have to promote an, um, an open internet and avoid um, internet fragmentation is to one, maybe make sure uh, human rights is uh, centric as we develop our products and policies. And that's something that my team and many other teams at Meta are very focused on doing. Uh, we're also very committed to recognizing instances where governments play a role in defending an open internet. Um, and then inside of this conversation that we're having now, we're really interested in promoting a multi-stakeholder and international cooperation initiatives that defend, you know, an open internet. Um, I can talk a little bit more about this as we continue, because I think there are a few more questions that uh, speak to stakeholders and inclusivity. Thank you so much. Um, yes, and you spoke a lot about um, human rights being at the very core of this discussion. And I think a lot of us here agree, and that's why we also think um, bringing a human rights framework to our own framework and, and the discussions we want to promote um, within the PNIF is so relevant as well because it's kind of a streamlined um, discussion and also effects um, to this and not just the technical um, simpler in a way um, debate around fragmentation. Um, maybe I, I'm not sure if the other panelists want to weigh in on this as well. I know we have been doing a little conversation on responses too, but if there is anything that has not been said yet, um, just raise your hands and, and I'll be happy to hand the floor to. Hello. I'm just not sure where the order is going to go. Hello, could I jump in? Hi, yes, please um, introduce yourself and, and yeah, welcome. Uh, hello, thank you very much for giving me the floor. Uh, hello, everyone, and distinguished panelists. I'm Amir Mokaperi from Iranian Academic Community. Uh, I would like to uh, talk about the main reason of internet fragmentation. Uh, I would like to mention three main reasons. Uh, what, uh, the first reason is increasing trends of internet weaponization and internet militarization and defining internet as a new battlefield. Uh, the second reason for internet fragmentation is unilateral coercive measures in digital world. And third uh, mention, I think, is non-cooperation uh, non of global digital platforms uh, by law enforcement of other country regarding illegal content and investigation of cyber crimes. Uh, the solution is defining internet as a peaceful environment based on international agreements. Uh, my, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, what would be the role of United Nations? My question is, what would be the role, role of United Nations family to ensure having a good internet as a civilian only and development oriented environment rather than an, an unstable space and new battlefield for cyber warfare at global level? Don't you think that signing a global declaration by all member states to recognition of internet as a peaceful environment for public good could be confidence building and could be a solution for avoiding internet fragmentation. Uh, my question is what would be the contribution of global digital compact in this regard? Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to raise my question. Thank you. Thank you so much. And maybe on the UN responses as well, it's worth mentioning that the UN Tech Envoy is gonna be in the main session 
on the same topic that's following this session. So um, it, it would also be a good opportunity to understand what's the approach and, and how he's um, looking into this study guide. Um, okay. We have two more hands on the on the Zoom room, but we also like we're heading to the end of our session, so I'll take them to you and then we can follow the discussion. Okay, okay, please go, ahead. Yeah, please, go ahead. please go ahead. Do you hear me? Thank you very much for giving this opportunity. My name is Ayaleo Aspaushi Rashi from Australia. I'm representing for the newly uh, formed new uh, uh, society, which is Alpha Digital Network. This is a community based um, Ethiopian uh, association. As we, as we all understood, the 17th uh, United Nations uh, IGF uh, umbrella uh, unification is the main thing is the resilient internet for sharing sustainable com uh, common future. Uh, as all participants know in the world, internet is based on internationalization, digitalization, virtualization, localization. With inclusive connectivity, using advanced technologies such as blockchain, AI, NFC, NFT, and quantum computing. Using the tools such as IoT, IEOS, based on this on our mind. And the previous uh, a person from Iran, he asked the question. What I'm asking here is, Ethiopia is the best example of disadvantage and advantage of the internet. We have 67 million Ethiopian is connected. And then also, as the uh, Honorable Prime Minister yesterday clearly clarified, the internet is the last two years distracted Ethiopia as a sovereign state. So my question is, what are the UN plan in the future? What are the plan action protect such countries or member countries from the spreading false and information to a sovereign minister and also attacking financial institutions. As you know, the current situation of the world is two different financial war, a currency war between the East and the West, which is the current the Swiss system and the newly established the BRICS system. And based on this, what are the UN initiative member countries using securely and properly the international based internet for the spreading all over the world with peacefully, productive, and accessibility in the future to all UN member countries. What are the plans? This is a, a good opportunity to Ethiopia. You are here in Ethiopia. You, the whole world is know Ethiopia. The social media and the stream media was spreading false news about Ethiopia. Ethiopia is peaceful now. As you see, six months ago, it was a different uh, phase. Now I'm asking on behalf of Alpha Dejen or Alpha New Society members, the United, the United Nations has to start dialoguing and starting draft international United Nations internet governance law. What are the plan if it's a plan? If not the plan, I'm asking you on behalf of my community. And also as an Ethiopian um, living in Australia, I'm asking on behalf of Ethiopian people 
please understand draft start international law then all countries we know that america has it and all developed countries have their own internet laws so there is no international law so what are we waiting 17 times of this kind of conference is not initiating international law thank you very much thank you <clears throat> thank you so much for your comment and, and question as well um just on that i think um other than some the majority of the discussions we're, t we're having here they also have some connection with the the cooperation international cooperation and and how um all stakeholders can come to the same place and, and table and to address and understand each other's issues so um this is also part of, of our discussion as well and it's um thank you for the input um we have some other questions from remote but i'll, I'll maybe ask um on on in spite of time for our panelists to reply on chat if possible so yeah, but just just to acknowledge them, we we saw your questions, um, Izan and and Bo. So yeah, Shitawa, I'm gonna hand it back to you. Thank you. Um, so we want to spend the last few minutes uh, asking you all um, online and, and on site about the um, the next steps um, and what needs to be done. Um, there are two questions there. What can stakeholders do? to avoid fragmentation, to protect an open interoperable internet? What, what can um, we discuss here that we can then continue to work on with reference to the framework um, uh, in the next year? That's one. Um, and then um, if you have any points you wanna make about the, the next steps for the policy network itself and how we engage others, please do share those. So those are some questions to, to take us into the next stage of the policy network's life. Um, if anyone has any comments, uh, wants to share any perspectives, please do raise your hand. Seeing any here, are there any online? Anyone online? There's one here, so go to you okay uh thank you for uh, your clarification i'm Lauda from senegal there is uh something is going on my mind uh is um fragmentation here is the concept or it's just a fact and if it is going to be if it is a concept that is going to be uh implemented maybe it will have a huge impact on uh, digital rights. Okay, am, am I right for that? That's my question. I believe the understanding is that it is happening and could, could get more serious. And now is the time to do something. <laughs> Any other thoughts? We also have some questions from remote. Okay. Thank you, Bo, right? And yes, the impact on digital rights um, is certainly there. Sorry. Go um, at the win. Well, if you want to open your mic and 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 send your tell us your question. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me, guys? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Claire. So this is Bohol from uh, from ISOC Youth Ambassador. So my question is. Uh, According to the according to the uh, structure we provided to the to the meeting, I have seen that some kinds of uh, ideas or the uh, what can I say the, the it should some kind it has some kinds of ambigu ambiguity uh, because when we talk about the contents or something like that, uh, is all the behavior that uh, limited people from viewing the content in the internet can be can, can be referred to the user experience part of the fragmentation of the internet. But we still have some uh, some behaviors such as fight against the cyber crime or the discrimination. So maybe uh, in the future, beyond talking about what is or what can be referred to the fragmentation, Maybe we can talk something about what cannot be referred to the 
uh, fragmentation in the in uh, in the future, especially when we think about the fighting against the cyber crime or the discrimination or other things against the human rights. These things cannot be referred to the uh, fragmentation. So that's my point. Okay, thank you. Yes, I think that's very helpful in thinking about what is and what isn't and unpacking those different elements in more detail. Uh, it's something that the policy network could do. Uh, any other thoughts on, um, on, on how we can move forward? Analysts are also welcome to come in. Yes, the gentleman there. Hi, so again, uh, I'm just actually wanted to respond to the last comment from, from the gentleman, right? Um, you know, cyber, th there's certain activities that will have consequence of um, creating a risk of fragmentation or driving a certain degree of fragmentation. Um, but that is, you know, an inevitable consequence of law enforcement or the like. So, especially if we consider things like content moderation and, and, and that sort of thing, the fact that um, a particular country has a fact-checking organization or does something or another to engage with uh, platforms that says, hey, this content is harmful content, please do something about it, does create a, a risk of fragmentation. But when we weigh it up, we, we sort of come to the conclusion that there's other ways to navigate the fragmentation risk. Um, we're not talking here about a technical a technical thing. I think it would be unhelpful to redefine fragmentation to exclude things that are fragmentation, um, but that we accept as as, as acceptable. I, I think we need to sort of yeah uh, avoid the sort of if we like it, it's not fragmentation um, sort of discourse. Yeah, I was just going to say that from some of your interventions as well, I get the feeling that the user um, aspect, the user basket might be the one that we need to qualify or better define the most, um, or even like what, because as as um, some of the interventions pointed out, um, geo-blocking content, even content moderation, um, application of content moderation rules, content governance in general, um, this has been happening ever, ever since the beginning of social media and and um, intermediaries. So that is also the, the part that we might need some some better qualifiers as well. So if anyone has ideas or inputs to that, we, it will be um, very welcome to the discussion because it's we do want to know like what is um, definitely the problem here, right? Great. So we'll go quickly to the comments um, uh, from the online participants and then we'll be wrapping up. So is that? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I mean, uh, my question was sort of asked a, a while back, so I think the time for it is sort of passed. But in light of the recent comments on content moderation, I think it's uh, come back to the fore. Um, the question that I have for the panel is, uh, does the framework address extraterritorial measures that are globally applied? For example, you have things like global content takedown orders, um, which may potentially go against certain human rights principles, but the user experience is not fragmented in that case. However, there is still overall loss. And so I think Olaf recently answered the question that arises from that, which is, should fragmentation be held up against an ideal version or standard of what the internet experience should be like, uh, rather than what it actually is? Because you might have loss of rights, even if the experience or the infrastructure is not really fragmented. That's the question that I have. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I think we also have, um, Nawal has her hand up, right? Um, yes, thank you. Um, I also wanted to uh, comment on the ramifications of, of uh, internet fragmentation on the emerging technologies and AI. Uh, if we look at uh, this uh, at this issue in the future, I think it would like have an immense um, an immense like impact on uh, those technologies, um, the free flow of data and information is rest restricting the free flow of information and data uh, will eventually like exaggerate the issue of uh, unfairness and bias we see in right now in AI. Uh, it would like 
eventually may lead to stop these technologies or, ex or severely exclude those people and nations from the global space and be included on those innovation. Um, so uh, yeah, I think it's important to uh, also take into account the, the impact on the free flow of data and how it will impact the emerging technologies like AI and IoT and big data when those like uh, societies or like nations that imposing internet fragmentation um, continues to exclude those people. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, thank you for that perspective. I think you brought an interesting point um, now all about how fragmentation excludes people um, and has an impact on development. Uh, and it really has a very wide range of impacts. We, we spoke about digital rights there. I think human rights has come up a few times. Well, that is of course, one of the impacts of fragmentation. And, and one of the reasons that we, we I think we are also um, concerned and committed uh, to, to avoiding it. And one step for that in that direction has been trying to understand better everyone's perceptions. We hope that the, the framework is, is useful in that regard. Um, we are planning to um, take this conversation, um, unpack it in more detail, perhaps the what is and what isn't um, in, in each area, um, consider what um, criteria or, or what elements of a spectrum um, of, of what could constitute or qualify fragmentation in each of those areas might be. And ultimately, we hope that we'll be able to offer some recommendations uh, to the global community, to stakeholders um, for addressing um, internet fragmentation, for avoiding it. Um, and one area is, of course, the global, one opportunity is the global digital compact. Um, and so with that, um, I want to make sure that nobody else wants to come in. Yes. Uh, just a, uh, another comment on the, the draft as well. Um, this was obviously one of the, the first opportunities of interaction between the IGF community and um, the draft framework. It's gonna, it's open for comments. If anyone wants to bring in any more ideas or, or um, if you wanna suggest anything in, in the baskets or qualifications or anything in that sense, um, it's very much open to anyone. It's on the PNIF page. You can find it under the intersectional work of the IGF. So yeah, we're all, all you're all welcome to, to weigh in and add some more thoughts to this discussion. And just to add on uh, what Bruna just uh, just said, so the draft framework is there, and the idea is if the PNF next year continues its work, um, that it can start from this framework to probably discuss a lot of the questions that have been raised today and have more detailed focused discussions, but within uh, the framework or using the framework as a background. And I wanted to add the PNF is indeed uh, we're looking forward to further comments and input, uh, the framework itself, but also the um, summaries of the um, meetings we had that led to the framework uh, are on the uh, Policy Network's webpage on the IGF website. And there is also a link to a, a simple Google form where you can submit feedback either on the overall idea of the framework or if you want on any of the three uh, elements or dimensions want to add in comments, uh, we would very much appreciate. Thank you all again so much for coming. Uh, we uh, would also encourage everyone who can to come to the main session on internet fragmentation, which is happening at 11. Starting 30 minutes, 11.30. 11, oh, 11, 11, 15. 11, 15, 15 minutes. In 15 minutes, um, where again, we hope to build on this discussion. Um, and hope to see many of you there. Thank you for coming. Thank you all. Thank you to the panelists as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course, on online. Thank you.